Hello, my name is Ian Bogolasang, and this is the first video in a series showing you the Ivy demos. I've copied the Ivy demo output from the filer from slash scripts slash Ivy slash Ivy output to my desktop here so that we can show you them for the videos. You can see here that for demos 0 through 5, there's two flavors of them. I've repeated the demo twice, once on a DF subsystem and once on an HM800. And the functionality that you see in the ones marked DF is the functionality that you get without a command device and the functionality that you can get for any vendor's equipment if you use Ivy on that equipment. And then the ones marked RAID are showing you the additional information and functionality that you get with a command device. IV's use of command devices is completely transparent. Uh, you don't specify anything in the IV script program. It automatically discovers them and uses them if there's one present. So let's take a look at the first demo. Um, one of the things is that IV always saves a copy of the original source IV script program in the output folder. And let's take a look at that source program. Here we can see that the IV script program consists of a hosts statement that uh, we're using two hosts, Sun159 and 172.17.19.159, which is the IP address of Sun159. So in this way, um, I could test multi-host operation with a single host. Then you can see that the host statement always has a select clause, and that select clause must specify either serial number or vendor. In the case of Hitachi subsystems, because the inquiry always gives you a serial number, so use serial number for Hitachi subsystems. If you're using a different vendor subsystem, you can use the vendor attribute to make sure that you don't write over top of your test host boot drives, which is normally considered a bad thing. Uh, then in terms of the output that you get, uh, all host LUNs, if you look at that file, uh, you can see what SCSI inquiry returned for every slash dev slash SDXX LUN found on the test host. And here we've got two test hosts, so we see the set of LUNs uh, repeating twice. We can see a set of LUNs on an AMS 2100. And then here we can see the boot drive of Sun159. Okay. Uh, next, once we've selected out of all discovered LUNs, the LUNs which are available to create workloads on. This uh, is shown in the available test LUNs.csv file. And for DF, SCSI inquiry, it tells you the LDEV and it tells you the port, but you don't get much else in SCSI inquiry uh, from a DF subsystem. And it's interesting that in SCSI, inqu uh, SCSI inquiry, this particular subsystem is reporting the LUNs as being on port 2A whereas in most of the documentation, um, DF LUNs are labeled 0A and 1A, but I guess in SCSI Inquiry, they show as 1A and 2A. So the 2A actually comes from SCSI Inquiry. Okay, that's it for demo 0DF.